What is going on guys? Today I have two subs right around the $500 mark, right around 3000 watts RMS, and both are big old beefy subs that happen to be both be made by Alfred Audio. So let's take them out and see which one is better. That is right guys, today we have the Def Bont Apocalypse 3012R and we have the Avatar SDU-12. And both these subs retail for right around 500 bucks. And both are made by Alfred Audio. Alfred Audio is the owner of Defbonts and Avatar. So we're going to see what both these subs are about and see which one you should get. Real quick, guys, for the next giveaway on this channel, we have this kicker. This is a VL7R setup. So a nice little preloaded setup over here for one of you lucky guys to be entered for this Go over to my Facebook page. I will be posting the details over on that page. So go check that out. Link will be in the description below. First off, quick look up at these two bad boys. Big old beefy, beautiful subs. Got a lot of great stuff going on both of these things. So let's jump right into it. Over here, I got a little cheat sheet for y'all. So of course, you can kind of see that they both are right at that $500 mark with the Defbonts being a teeny bit more expensive. The Defbonts is rated at 2,800 watts, whereas the Avatar is rated at 3,000 watts. Uh, one of the main differences of these guys, this fellow over here has a three inch coil, whereas this guy has a big old four inch coil. Now what I like about this one is it has the uh, black coating on the coil, even though it's a three inch, whereas this guy, even though it's a four inch coil, does not have the a super high temp black coating. That being said, I've had no problems with that coil uh, so far. Now, this guy is rated at 19 millimeters of X Max, whereas this guy is rated at 28 millimeters. That being said, I think this guy has a good deal more of X Max than 19 millimeters. I will show you all some slow mos of both these guys getting maxed out. As for the SPL, they both are very similar. Of course, Defbonts 86.5 dB and the STU is 85.7 dB. Technically, with this guy having a little higher sensitivity, it should technically be a teeny bit uh, softer and get a little bit louder with less power. As for the FS, this guy is 33.8 hertz, and this guy is 34 hertz. So again, very, very similar. As for the BL that has to do with the motor force, this guy has a 26 BL, whereas this guy has a 25.2. So the motor force is a teeny bit stronger on the Def Bonts. Now I know this guy weighs at 61.5 pounds. Couldn't find the exact weight for this fella, but it should be pretty similar. And there are the DB scores that I got out of both of these guys. I will show you them in the video, but again, got pretty similar and I'll go over that here in a second. Here are the bottoms of the subs. Motors look to be somewhat similar. Of course, we have a big old double stack here. We're going to have a triple stack over here but these stacks are thinner so they both look to be pretty close to 300 ounce motors of course we have the black finish over here as opposed to the polished finish on the avatar let's take a look at the terminals and uh tinsel leads they both have really massive terminals you'll fit big old wire in both of these no problem the def bonds does have slightly bigger ones though they both have two strands of the round tinsel leads running to each coil. Now, Def Bonts is uh, Alfred Audio's a little bit more, I guess you could say, kind of high-end brand, whereas the Avatar is a little more the budget-friendly brand. So the uh, Def Bonts is going to be a little bit more flashy, a little bit more custom-looking. Of course, we have this nice custom-looking surround. We have a carbon fiber dust cap. We have a very custom tool basket, which is just really, really awesome, guys. Really beautiful. Whereas over here on this Avatar, we have a standard Mega Roll surround. Still have a very, very stiff dust cap. And it is some sort of weave, but it's not carbon fiber. And we have a standard TI frame basket, which is a great uh, basket. Tons of subs use them. But again, it is a uh, standard, more generic part. Now we, have, of course, have the spiders. Both of them look somewhat similar. But one thing to notice, since this guy has a 4-inch coil... It does mean there's a little bit less room for a spider as opposed to a three inch sub. Now they have different baskets. So you're not comparing apples to apples here, but let's see which one has a bigger spider. Again, this is not scientific or anything, 
but we can see that's about two and a half inches. Whereas if we come to this guy, we are sitting at about one and three quarter inches. Now that plays a little bit into uh, how your X-Max is made out of. So your X-Max, of course, how much the sub can move in one direction. Of course, this guy is rated at 19, this guy 28. But since this guy has a four inch coil, has a smaller spider. So technically, just as far as the spider is, is uh, con concerned, that is a limiting factor for the X-Max on this guy, as opposed to the three inch coil, having a bit a bigger spider, being to can stretch out more, meaning you can get more X-Max. And that being said, it also depends on your coil and your motor plays into that as well. So it's not just the spider, but that is one reason why a lot of people like the three inch coils and Y subs like this uh, Sundown ZV6 over here, use three inch coils, is because it gives you a bigger spider for more X-Max. Now that brings me into my next thing. Of course, this guy does have a bigger coil, but as I mentioned earlier, it just has the clear glue Whereas this guy has the black glue. Now, one reason that it could be that this guy got louder than this guy is that the Death Bots is a dual one ohm. So I was able to wire it down to half an ohm. Whereas this avatar, I had to get it as a dual two ohm. So I could only wire it down to one ohm. So after box rise and stuff, maybe this guy didn't get as much clean power going to it as the Death Bots. That could have affected the DB reading, but still they were very close. Both these subs take the power and get loud. It's been a pleasure having both of these. Ah, right, there we go, guys. Not bad. Got a 143.3. Phew, moving there. Whoa, look at that. Almost 5,000 watts. And we got it actually a little bit better. Got a 142.7.
overall thoughts and which sub would I get. So personally, I like the DefBonts as far as just looks and overall build quality. Looks really good, built excellently, and it did really, really good in my uh, system and still 2,800 watts is an insane rating. And y'all, I put this thing to the absolute test. I believe in my full review of this thing, I did a five minute just straight test tone of it at 40 Hertz. which is absolutely brutal and it gave me no problems. So that is insane. Definitely a super tough coil. Now this guy, I didn't do that exact test too, but I did do musical RMS test and I did just play music through it nonstop and I really, really pushed it, getting it up into four or five and 6,000 watts. And it didn't give me any trouble either as far as the coil is concerned. So as far as the coils go, both these subs are super tough. Now, while I just overall like the Defmont better, I would say for my application, the Avatar probably did a little bit better. I did have some problems with this guy just unloading a little bit easier on some of those lower notes. That could be the fact that its suspension is a little bit softer. It does have a higher uh, sensitivity, so that means, again, less power to get louder, whereas this guy needs more power to get louder, so I really never had to worry about this guy maxing out normally unless I was really, really pushing it. But if it just came down to the overall looks and build quality and still being a very well-performing sub, I do like the Apocalypse better. Well, guys, I hope that helps. Both these subs are awesome subs. Really expensive at that $500 mark. But Alfred Audio is really known for making excellent, excellent quality stuff. Again, have had zero problems out of any of them. And if you're wanting top-performing stuff, you really do gotta spend the money. Okay guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. I appreciate each and every one of you so, so much. There will be affiliate links in the description to both of these guys, should you wanna go pick one of them up. Should you purchase them through that link, helps out the channel a little bit, which helps me out so, so much. Guys, I did pay for both these subs. These companies did not send me these things, so at 500 bucks a piece, it's over a grand of subs sitting right here, just to make a couple videos for y'all. That is crazy. Super, super blessed I get to do it, guys, and y'all are the reason, but again, a lot of money going into these things, so I really, really appreciate all of you guys liking, sharing the videos, subscribing, and clicking on those links. You guys, let me know which, what you thought. Let me know which sub you would get. But remember, as always, keep basing on.